Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about Earth, and us, and our influence on planet Earth. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it would have made a perfect Earth Day video, but I always forget when it is, and also, in my book, every day is an Earth Day, so I thought this would make a very interesting topic based on a really brilliant paper I recently discovered. But most importantly, it's also something that, well, I think we should all know about. And now in this video we are going to be discussing biodiversity, protecting nature and also our influence on the planet, it's actually not what you think about and you might be surprised by the findings from this study. First of all though, let's talk about this unusual perspective we have today that, well, we humans are destroying nature. And I've always had a problem with this. And you might have the same problem with this too. It's essentially this idea of humans not being nature, not being part of the nature, and actually somehow being this negative part that influenced the nature in some negative way. And I've always tried to figure out where is this notion of us versus nature came from. I mean, in some sense, I guess it is maybe from the Judeo-Christian religions where the God basically said, and I'm paraphrasing here, but basically go make babies and then uh, take care of the nature. But this is just a guess, and because this sort of uh, paradigm is also very common in science, it's also very common in everywhere really, journalism, policy making, uh, politics, it's pretty much the paradigm we have for everything around us. This idea of humans essentially being like pestilence for Earth, or this virus that is destroying everything, is it doesn't really stand well with me and I don't really know where it came from, but it's actually completely incorrect. Because the idea of humans being separate from nature or being somehow not really part of it is totally wrong. And now, according to the scientific paper I'm going to be discussing today, it's also a scientific fact that humans have always been part of nature and have always guided nature in some way. But let's start right here. What this map shows you in different colors are different changes every region on the planet has gone through for the past 12,000 years up until now. And it shows you how the humanity transformed the planet from basically being mostly rangelands where there's a little bit of guidance but for the most part everything sort of works in balance to having huge amounts of agricultural areas and also huge amounts of urban and industrial areas, most of which have actually been added to this map in the last hundred years or so. And what's really cool is that this map also comes as a kind of a simulation that you can run by yourself in your browser that shows you how all of these changes occurred over the past 12,000 years. And here if we run this, you'll notice how things do change quite dramatically depending on the area and also depending on the age, but then things really start changing in the last few hundreds of years, and especially in the last few decades. And so the reality is that what we're talking about when we're talking about damage to nature, it's really from the last few decades and it's really related to our misunderstanding of our original interaction with nature itself, which is exactly what this paper is trying to help us understand. It helps us understand that people have always been part of nature and what's even more interesting is that we've actually guided it, pretty much shaping everything around us for the past 12,000 years. But for the first, I guess, 11,000 years, most of this interaction was somewhat positive. And when I say positive, what I really mean is that humans, up to about a certain point in history, were actually a positive drive of different types of biodiversity and different types of preservation around the planet. And so even thousands of years ago, when all these ancient empires were around, even back then the humans were still doing a lot of positive things to the nature around us. A lot of the conservation and a lot of early biodiversity was actually directly correlated with the presence of human beings. And we're not just talking about a tiny forest or some island somewhere, we're talking about approximately 95% of all of the temperate woodlands and grasslands and up to about 90% of all of the tropical land. And as this map shows us, approximately three-fourths of the entire planet was actually influenced by early humans as far back as 10,000 BC or 12,000 years ago. Everything you see in brown here, that's basically where biodiversity and presence of various species and of course nature itself was directly correlated with the presence and activity of human beings. Which is of course quite the opposite of the modern assumption that the human development and of course development of cities, development of agriculture and development of areas around us were somehow detrimental to nature. So this paper clearly shows us that that was not the case, that it's quite the opposite. 
For example, they establish a strong relationship between the presence and activity of humans, early humans, and the presence and biodiversity, as well as numbers, of different vertebrates in those locations. As a matter of fact, the early locations that had no human activity whatsoever were extremely poor in biodiversity and, I guess, in what you would call healthy nature. And what this, of course, implies is that early humans were very, very beneficial to nature as a whole. And since this paper makes it very clear that humans were not just part of nature, but a critical part that actually influenced nature for the better, all of these lessons are very important for us to learn for the future of humanity and, of course, for the future of nature in general. But at the same time, it's also important to remember that it's not wrong to say that we are in the middle of another extinction event, a dramatic decrease in biodiversity because of human activity. But that's not a contradiction, because as this paper shows, the early human expansion and just the general human activity around us has always been beneficial. It's really just the last few decades and really more like the last few hundred years that things have changed dramatically. And so it's really the result of the abuse of land that's really causing all of this. Something that the scientists refer to as appropriation of land and colonization of land, an intensified use of land that was previously more or less protected and protected by us, by early humans. And the study makes it pretty clear that early humans have always been kind of like these stewards. We we're always responsible for being the bigger brothers, protecting the land and protecting nature around us without even kind of thinking about it. Something that many indigenous people on the planet still follow and still believe today. So there's actually a huge lesson to learn from these early cultures and from how they protected nature. Also surprisingly, or I guess not that surprisingly, the most biodiverse areas on the planet today, all of them are associated with indigenous communities playing the role of a steward. With Australia being a very good example of this, the areas that have been under indigenous protection for the past 50,000 years are very biodiverse, whereas the areas where the European settlers essentially settled and started agriculture are very, very poor in biodiversity and are really struggling in terms of keeping healthy natural habitats. And so even though for most of the history of the planet we've lived in an equilibrium with the planet, something transitioned in the last hundred or so years, or maybe a few hundred years, and the equilibrium shifted completely. But the lesson is still there, and there are still a lot of things we can learn from how the natives and from how indigenous communities take care of the nature today as well. So for example, some of the other studies that the scientists mention in their paper help us understand how these ancient people basically spread all sorts of different seeds and also all sorts of nutrients that ended up enriching pretty much most of the area in Africa. And so trying to harness some of this knowledge and some of these habits from the indigenous communities and maybe somehow applying them to modern life is probably one of the most important things we can do today to basically prevent another extinction event. If we've managed to be the stewards of the planet for thousands of years, now would be a perfect time for us to try to return to these roots, to try to once again learn what we were so good at for thousands and thousands of years, or for pretty much most of our existence here on the planet. Although somehow this lesson was forgotten in the last few hundreds of years. Now what exactly caused this is maybe a topic for another video once I figure it out. Right now it's anyone's guess. I guess we got really dumb. And also very greedy as well. Living our lives and living like the resources are never going to end and also thinking that everything is going to be fine, someone is going to solve the problems for us. But this uncontrolled extraction of resources and this somewhat um, unusual disregard for nature around us is going to end very poorly for us. And so one of the main points made in this paper is that we actually need to try to understand, analyze and learn from these ancient practices that literally created the planet around us as we knew it a few hundred years ago. And since today all of the areas that are still biodiverse are pretty much managed by the indigenous communities and unfortunately that's only about 5% of the entire area on the planet, we definitely need to somehow turn the science and understanding of these things into a lesson for the modern agriculture, for modern production practices, for modern mining practices. All of this has to be done before it's too late. And so the scientists here are not saying we should stop using technology and go back to the old ways. They're basically saying we need to learn from the old ways and apply it to the way we do things today, simply because it was actually helping the planet to the point where it became extremely biodiverse. Or, as the title says here, we shaped the planet for 12,000 years. 
and now we're shaping it once again, but like in a really bad way, so we need to stop that soon. And anyway, a brilliant paper, definitely worth a read, or at least check out that map that simulates how we transformed the Earth in the last 2000 years. But we'll talk more about all of this in some of the future videos. A lot of these lessons are still really difficult to understand, especially because our society is advancing way too fast for its own good. So what exactly we're going to do and how exactly we're going to solve these problems, I think nobody has an answer to that just yet. But we need to be aware of this, and this is the important first step. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, or maybe just come back tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.